Texans trying to answer now down 14 points. Biggest deficit of the night for Houston. Stroud out to his right, just has to throw it away. Pressure by Washington and Kyle Van Noy. Second and ten. Well, this Baltimore defense and just come after you in so many ways. And you're going to see Nico Collins. He is wide open in the middle of the field. There is nobody within ten yards anywhere around him. But Stroud gets flushed outside the pocket right away and just has to unload it. But it's just it, play after play. As I mentioned, you, you're fighting for every single yard. Here's Schultz. That's Patrick Queen. This defense by Mike McDonald, what a job he has done in a little different style than the guy who came before him in Wink Martindale. Of course, Wink Martindale brought a lot of blitzes. Mike McDonald comes in. He's in his second year as the coordinator. Doesn't bring as much pressure. They're good at every position. And, man, he's got them fine-tuned and playing really good football. It looked like Patrick Queen injured himself on that last First, play. Charge time out Baltimore. And the Ravens need to take a timeout. Trying to get him off the field. Well, the Texans last week became the first team in NFL history to win a playoff game after winning four or fewer games each of the three previous seasons. The turnaround has been, I mean, basically unprecedented as they've gotten through the wild card round. Amico Ryan's the job he's done. Bobby Slowick, the man in that conversation CJ Stroud who led the NFL in average pass yards per game not among rookies among all quarterbacks and he has been held in check tonight the Texans with 177 total yards just 146 through the air and nothing on the ground yeah and this has been an offense throughout the season that has been excellent you know in their explosive plays big pass plays down the field and Baltimore, true to character, has just not given up any of those. Here's pressure by Mollett. Stroud on third down has to throw it away. You said they don't blitz much, but when they do, as they did here with Mollett, they can really bother a quarterback. Well, they are, but you're going to see Mollett comes off the slot, and then they pull out guys in the middle. They come off the other edge. This time they bring more, but a lot of times they'll give the appearance that they're bringing more rushers than they really are. And it's really the genius of Mike McDonald and how he orchestrates that and confuses an offensive line and a quarterback. And they've been doing it all year long. DuVernay will stay away from it. And it's tapped down inside the 25. 48-yard punt. Frustrating night for Bobby Slowick in this Texans offense. Not so for that group. The Ravens defense flexing. What? $6.99 for the DQ chicken strip basket. Oh, just $6.99 for the whole basket. But it's only for a limited time? Let's go get it right now. I'm driving. DQ. Happy tastes good. A little bit more here in this fourth quarter. It's a good run game to lean on. A flag flies on this play. Baltimore has only been penalized twice in this game. Until. Legal shift. Offense. Two men moving at the same time. Number 42 and number four. Five-yard penalty, second down. So penalty number three to make it second and six. Not much from Dalvin Cook in this game tonight. Activated off the practice squad. Four-time Pro Bowl running back. Let go by the Jets. Picked up by the Ravens. They cut Melvin Gordon loose. They brought Dalvin Cook aboard, but we've only seen him for one play that I can remember. And he didn't touch it. Yeah, I thought we might see a little bit more of him. They've talked about maybe getting the ball to him a little bit. Here's Jackson. Pulled it out, gets the first down. 
And Perryman, who delivered the hit, is injured. Well, Jonathan Grenard, he crashes so hard that it's, he makes this a really easy read then for Lamar Jackson. Nobody on the outside to account for him and an easy pickup. So they look at Perryman. They've got Will Anderson, the Texans do on their sideline. They're looking at his leg. His defense starting to get tired for Houston. We'll take a break. Divisional playoff bracket. Our game top left tonight, Green Bay at San Francisco, the seven against the one seed. And then tomorrow in the afternoon, it's Detroit hosting multiple playoff games for the first time in the same postseason. Taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then at night, it's Buffalo hosting Kansas City and Edwards. Bit banged up after that last one yard pickup. That was quite an atmosphere last week at Ford Field. It'll be that much better tomorrow on second and nine hill first down plus they've had jk dobbins they've had keaton mitchell edwards and hill and justice hill has really found his stride here lately he really has in this offensive line just doing a really good job kevin zeidler uh, he's been playing in this league a long time. He helps kind of lead the charge, but it's a it's a veteran group. The youngest guy up front is the only guy who ended up making the Pro Bowl, and that's the center, Tyler Linderbaum. Everyone else, you know, you've got guys who have 80 starts, 140 starts, 180 starts. I mean, these guys have been playing a lot of football, and they start flexing their muscle on a defense late in games. They're hard to slow down. When we talked to John Harbaugh about Lamar Jackson and this time between games 20 days he told us we need to protect well early to get Lamar settled in I I would say that process took a little while to get this offense settled in and now we're seeing all that it can do and with regard to Lamar Jackson he said this year he's been more of a confrontational leader with the guys on this team not in a bad way in a good way he's getting up he's demanding accountability there's a lot going on and a lot of it's good for the Baltimore Ravens in the 2023 season. Here's a carry. That's Cook. Dalvin Cook. Welcome to Baltimore. Well, Dalvin Cook, he wasn't too thrilled with his lack of opportunities when he was with the Jets. He hasn't had much tonight. But boy, he got the ball and he was going to make the most of this carry. That's a that's a really good job. He didn't see a hole like that in New York. I promise you But He's up on the second level before anybody's even around him You know, this is this is a fun time in the game for Baltimore when you get to this point You got a two touchdown lead you're running the football and you're just kind of having your way Dalvin Cook just went for 21 and now he carries up the middle the Ravens are over 200 yards Lisa Salters, what do you have down on the field? Well, Joe, Dallin Cook said that he was released by the Jets and drove to Baltimore the very next day. He said being here has been like a breath of fresh air. He's just so grateful to get this opportunity with how things went with the Jets. He says he has the utmost respect for Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. Doesn't want to step on anybody's toes because they've been putting in the work here all week and all year. But he said any opportunity I get, I'm going to give it everything I got. Yeah, he only averaged five touches a game with the Jets. Just over three yards a carry with all their offensive line issues. He's going to make the most of this chance behind this group as he gets to the line of scrimmage, lost a yard as Grenard made that stop for Houston. Well, and the thing about it is, too, it's, it, you know, Dalvin Cook, it's, it's not like this guy hasn't been productive. He was coming off four consecutive thousand yard seasons. And, you know, I get it, a thousand yards isn't what it once was, but it's still pretty good. And he was sure excited to maybe get an opportunity to play here tonight and had a couple nice carries there. I have a feeling that as they move through next week's game and whatever hap might happen there, you know, we might see a little bit more from Dalvin Cook. Third down and seven. Flowers broke a tackle and takes a seat for the first down. You know, this is an organization that 
for the last several years have had a hard time developing wide receivers. They made the pick for Zay Flowers. John Harbaugh at the end of last season said that they were going to upgrade that wide receiver room. They started with the draft in Zay Flowers and the move that he makes in that space. He's been doing that since week one. And he has elite level quickness. And he's led this team in receiving. And then they bring in Odell Beckham. They sign Nelson Aguilar. And haven't talked a lot about these receivers, but they've played a big role in this team being the number one seed in the AFC. And here to Hill with under six and a half to go. Gain of five for Justice Hill. John Harbaugh's team has not made it to the AFC Championship since they won it all in 2012. He's got his best group to get there and beyond. Welcome you inside the broadcast booth, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman. This, this team is starting to roll. You have that bye week. It took them a little while, but we're seeing why the Baltimore Ravens were the number one seed. Yeah, and, and I'm not totally surprised. Like I said, when you come in and you didn't play in the wild card round, you are a little uptight because you've worked so hard to get to this point. And then you got the Texans who came off the big win last week. So we saw that early in the game. But as the game wore along, especially here in this second half, we, we've seen what Baltimore is all about and why they've been really the best team in the AFC, maybe in the league all year long. They've beaten a lot of good football teams, a lot of good teams that made the postseason. Detroit, San Francisco, Miami, and not, they not only won those games, they dominated those games. This is a confident football team. They can beat you a lot of different ways, and tonight has been an excellent performance by a lot of people. Jackson keeps Stanley in front of him. Touchdown, Lamar! Second career game for Lamar Jackson with two touchdown runs, two touchdown passes, and the presumptive NFL MVP as his team pointed to the AFC Championship game. He's been here and collected when he talked to our Lisa Salters. But this has been a different team here in the second half. They have, they have dominated in every way. This game was tied at 10 at the half. Ravens, three possessions, three touchdowns. Here's Sims, who's got a punt return for a touchdown tonight. The offense for the Texans has been held out of the end zone. The NFL Pro Bowl games presented by Verizon headed to Orlando. The Peyton Manning coached AFC faces off against Eli Manning's NFC squad and skills showdown on Thursday, February 1st on ESPN. And the action continues with the AFC against the NFC flag football game and more skills on Sunday, February 4th on ESPN and ABC. On Thursday, before the Super Bowl, the NFL, NFL's brightest stars will be recognized for the best plays and moments. In the 2023 season, it's the NFL Honors. Thursday, February 8th at 9 Eastern on CBS and NFL Network. Challenge flag was thrown out from the Ravens sideline. Baltimore is challenging that the runner fumbled the ball and they recovered it on the kickoff return. Let's see if Sims is able to maintain control. Somebody told Harbaugh to throw the challenge flag. He would have to believe, but they're going to take a look at it. And Sims is clearly down. 
Arbaugh did not win a challenge during the regular season. He's had a great year. But he's going to lose another challenge, it appears. Yeah, I guess at 31-10, you, you, you just don't feel like those timeouts may be that important when this thing's all said and done. Or he wanted why, me why to not challenge it. Have a chance to read a three-page long promo <laughs> about the NFL honors. And You've been doing good on those promos. Peyton's here, by the way. He sure. is here, yeah. Maybe. After review, the runner was down by contact. This will be an unsuccessful challenge for Baltimore, and we will challenge them, excuse me, charge them their second timeout. Let's look ahead to the, uh, the honors and the notable offensive rookie of the year candidates. I mean, Puka was unbelievable. Even in the postseason game, the playoff game, the wild card game against Detroit, you got two Lions at the end with Gibbs and Laporta, but C.J. Stroud with what he did through the air, protecting the ball, leading a team, I, he's got to be Yeah, runner, no right? question. And I don't know why we're surprised that Peyton's here. You know, I mean, the guy's everywhere, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Doing research for the uh, Pro Bowl games. <laughs> here is Stroud out to his right, chased by Jones. Incomplete defense. They're not going to let up in a 21 point game. It's second and 10. No, uh, you look like you got Millette a little bit banged up or no. That's the last thing you want to see. Darby comes off with or his Darby, I'm sorry. Arm kind of in a funny position as Rocky Asin takes his spot yeah because with Marlon Humphrey out that, again that's why Darby was getting the start second and ten overthrown was Dalton Schultz but a flag is down holding Office number 69. 10-yard penalty. Second down. Jack Mason, former fourth-round pick by the Patriots, guilty of a hold to back him up. Yep, there it is. So now, you know, for for as you mentioned, Joe, they're they're not letting up. The Ravens aren't, and so the Texans they have no choice but to start trying to get chunks and get the ball down the field. And this. Uh, this becomes a dangerous proposition. Tenth penalty against the Texans, a team playoff record. They're trying to get to their first AFC championship game in franchise history that dates back to 2002. Here's Woods underneath to the 25. Mallette makes that tackle after a gain of six. It's third down. And Ronald Darby is back out there for the Ravens. Another false start. Unable to handle this crowd noise here in Baltimore. Full start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Third down. Yeah, un unable to handle this crowd noise. Uh, the pre snap penalties, way too many of those. And it, it really. It's I think it's more a product of this defense and just the challenges that they present the looks that they give They're so well coached. You mentioned it earlier. I would be surprised I'd be shocked actually if Mike McDonald Returns as defensive coordinator. and He's not a head coach somewhere in the NFL next year Ogunbowale underneath short of the first down it's fourth down after Stevens missed a tackle early, but a gain of 13. There is Mike, 36 years old, second year coordinating this defense, was Jim Harbaugh's coordinator at Michigan and was with the Ravens prior to leaving to go to Jim's staff with the Wolverines. He's back, but you would have to believe not for long. Stroud on fourth down, incomplete for Schultz. And Mollette got home again on C.J. Stroud. He's been bringing pressure all night. 
Well, you got Millette, who's coming off the edge, and then you got Justin Matabike. He's the defensive tackle who's had a great year. He's going to drop out underneath it. So now you've got this coming off the edge. And, you know, yeah, Mike McDonald in this defense, it, you know, normally in a situation like this, you'd see a lot of defenses just kind of play soft and not give up the big play. But not the Ravens. They continue to play aggressive throughout the entire game. And what a game it's been. Ravens take over on downs and Dalvin Cook in the huddle for Baltimore as they try to get him rolling. 16th day with the organization for Cook. That defense gets a chance to rest. There's Dalvin. Down inside the 30. Take a look at our game recap brought to you by United Airlines. Nelson Aguilar with a three yard touchdown pass. First touchdown of the game. And then Steven Sims on the 67 yard punt return for the touchdown tied this game at 10. But in the second half, it's been all Ravens. Their first three possessions all went for touchdowns. Two on the ground by Lamar Jackson, one through the air to Isaiah Likely. And then like Bo Jackson on a Monday night football game years ago, up the tunnel went Lamar. And now we start talking about his career in the playoffs. First four compared to today. This one's got to feel awfully good for number eight. Yeah, really good. And the, and the big one is just not turning the ball over. He was smart. He ran the football exceptionally well. You know, he's the, he's all they had there, especially in that first half with the ability to run. And, you know, the Houston, Houston Texans made it a game with the punt return by Steven Sims. And but the offense for them, they just they just never were able to get it going against this defense. And we we knew that would be a challenge. It was a challenge week one. This group is so good. And yet the Texans will make the trip back to, to Houston and disappointed I know and I've been there when you've had the year that they've had and not a lot was expected and you make the postseason and you win a playoff game the end is is hard but they'll take a couple days to look back on this year and feel good about what they accomplished and then regroup and start focusing on 2024 it's third down and five the Texans are out of timeouts Toss to Hill, blocking out in front with Moses, and Hill is brought down short of first down yardage. If you look at the positives for the Texans, and there are so many to find, the two biggest questions that any organization faces, especially a rebuilding one, do we have the head coach and do we have the quarterback? The answer is a resounding yes on both counts. They've got a left tackle. They've got a top receiver in Nico Collins. They've got a corner in Derek Stingley Jr. They've got Tank Dell on his way back from injury. I mean, it's, it's a long list and a lot to be excited about. On fourth down and three, Hill gets it, and the Ravens keep control of the football and this game. Yeah, you know, you're right, Joe. And there's so much to feel good about. I mean, we talked about it week 18 when they were playing the Indianapolis Colts. There, there's so much to feel good about with the Houston Texans. And, you know, when you've got a rookie quarterback, we've said it a lot, and that you hope you come out of that year and that you feel like you have found your franchise quarterback. They believe that they found that they knew they had that really probably around week three or week four You know, he's been so impressive and D'Amico Ryan's and what he's been able to accomplish. They've had a heck of a draft You know, we just saw Nick Casario and the general manager what a great job He did put putting together this roster. So a lot of good stuff and and yet the end is hard, but This was Baltimore's night and it's been Baltimore's year and whoever comes in here next week, that's going to be a heck of a matchup. It's going to be it's going to be hard for anybody to come in here to this stadium and win. John Harbaugh has put together such a resume here with the Ravens. I know you have talked in games past when we've had Baltimore that from the top down, from 
Steve Bashotti, who owns the team, to the front office, to the head coach, to the way the organizations run, the public relations department, all of it as Cook tries the left side. This is as good as it gets with the Ravens in the NFL. Yeah, the, their structure and the way that they do things, I mean, it is the gold standard in how they do it. And uh, there's Steve Bashotti and of course, it's his leadership, and then Ozzie Newsom, what he was able to do as a general manager, and now it's Eric DaCosta and the constant. Of course, we look at Ray Lewis. He was, what a pick when they took him, when they moved to Baltimore. Jonathan Ogden, he was the first first-round pick. He's a Hall of Fame left tackle. Their second first-round pick was Ray Lewis. He's in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, they and then Eric DaCosta's continued to draft great players just like Ozzie Newsom did. And so they they really know what they're doing. The constant in all of that has been John Harbaugh. And he loves this football team and for good reason. The Ravens, as they look ahead, they're going to take on either Kansas City or Buffalo next Sunday here at home. In their playoff history, 1-0 all-time against Kansas City. 0-1 against the Bills. And it will be Lamar Jackson and company. They'll be able to talk about a win here tonight. Is it with Joe and Troy in the booth, one of the star players of the game as well. Back up to the uh, toasty booth. Joe and Troy, home team going to put the finishing touches on an awfully impressive second half of football, gentlemen. Yeah, that's exactly what it's been. A 43-yard try up coming from Justin Tucker. The now seven-time Pro Bowl kicker, best field goal percentage in his career in the history of the league. Just to make it a 24-point game. Which he does. Last time the Ravens won a divisional matchup, Joe Flacco and the Ravens took on Peyton Manning, who's in the stadium, as we mentioned. The Broncos with under a minute to play in the fourth. Ravens down by seven. Flacco found Jacoby Jones for a 70-yard touchdown to tie it. And in double overtime, Justin Tucker kicked a 47-yarder to win the game, 38-35. Their last divisional game victory went on to win that Super Bowl. How about this? The last time that Baltimore, there's a look at our good friend Peyton Manning. And Marshall Manning with a football in the Lamar Jackson jersey. And Jim Harbaugh, who uh, it certainly appears will be a head coach in this league again next year. Go ahead. I think Jim's probably trying to talk Peyton out of retirement if he gets a head job. That'd be smart. No, that, that the last time Baltimore hosted an AFC championship game, January of 1971. And they won that game, and then they went on to Super Bowl V and beat the Oakland Raiders. So it's been, what, 53 years since this city has hosted an AFC championship game. So you can only imagine what this place will be like next week. Yep, talking about the city of Baltimore. Different team, that ball's out. Damian Pierce with the return got it knocked out. Ravens say they have it. John Hussey says they don't. The runner fumbled the ball and recovered it. First down, Houston. Malik Harrison knocked it out. And John Hussey said that he recovered it. So somehow that ball found its way back into the gut of. Yeah, that's that. Wow. Damian Pierce. Yeah, it's it was certainly close. It didn't look initially like he would have had a chance to recover it, but guess he did. Here is Agunbawale over the right side on first down gets four. If you go back just for the Ravens, Troy, in 2018, Lamar Jackson was a rookie. Joe Flacco was hurt. Jackson took over. Won six of seven starts. 
lost that playoff game to the Chargers suffered seven sacks turned it over twice fans were chanting some were Flacco's name 2019 they were the number one seed they got the bye. 14 and 2 he won an MVP they lost to Tennessee 2020 they finally got a win at Tennessee they lost at Buffalo in the divisional and so all those questions that Lamar Jackson has been very even with us up front answering not losing his patience with it yeah. and saying it's history and I'm ready I'm antsy I can't wait to go and well he played great tonight he did yeah he he played great uh, he's had a great year as we mentioned earlier by all accounts he's going to win his second league MVP and rightfully so and yet this is a big win but there's a lot more left and he knows it so they'll feel good about this and they know they're going to have a tough opponent coming in next week and they're going to have their hands full with whoever that might be but the good thing for them is they get to do it right here at M&T Bank Stadium. The Ravens are moving on to the AFC championship game and John Harbaugh with his brother his father his mom with family in attendance gets to celebrate a return trip to the championship game for the first time since 2012. A resounding 24 point victory and 24 unanswered in the second half. The number one seeded Baltimore Ravens await the winner of the Bills and Chiefs.